whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him and he cannot sin. Because the Holy Ghost, one thing I recognize, working with the anointing, he works with boldness. He works when your conscience is clean. You could have sinned that day and not know it is a sin. And you can flow in the anointing like it goes out of fashion. Or you could have sinned that day and know it is a sin. And you feel so guilty. And all of a sudden it feels like God has left you. And it's all based on your conscience. And the Holy Spirit comes because where there's boldness, He comes. Where the blood has its full work, where it cleans our conscience. The Bible says the priests would have been anointed, they'd put blood on their thumbs and their toe and their ears, but blood first and then the oil. The Holy Spirit breathes upon the work of the blood. It's not something that has to be applied repetitively. It does His work once off. His blood is not weak, that we have to keep applying it. And it's all based on understanding and knowledge and conscience. If I've received His blood and I washed in His blood, it is cleansed. There's nothing that I can do that can undo that work. Otherwise, Christ has died in vain. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. The problem is here that we let others tell us what sin is and not look at what God says sin is. Watching that movie is sin. And I'm not advocating that. You see, because it is not possible to walk in love and sin. Go to 1 John 2 verse 1. Listen to this. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, but now he's contradicting himself. And this is John. In the one area he's saying that we cannot sin. He doesn't say we do not sin. He says we cannot sin. In another area he's saying that if you do sin, we have an advocate. The thing is that the judgment of God is not the same as the judgment of man. The way we read this verse is determined by our doctrine that we've been raised up in, who we have listened to, the churches we have sat in, who has trained us and taught us. What is our culture? It all determines on that. For one culture, it is okay for women to not have any clothing on. In another culture, it is bad. A sin is a very far, fine subject to get onto. As I said to you, you have a sin conscious, and then you have a righteousness consciousness, meaning that a sin consciousness, you are sin conscious. I did this, now God is not gonna move. What do I do? I immediately put myself under the law. And with that comes self-righteousness. Because now I think I did this good thing, now God is going to move. So as good and humble as what we want to sound, there's still an element of pride and righteousness that comes with it. Because I read my Bible and I prayed, God must move in the service. But the moment I think that God is moving because of that, a self-righteousness comes in. And you know what? The day that you cannot pray, you think God is not moving. Or we think that God is moving only because we're doing something. So we have to determine what is sin. And we need to understand that no one knew what sin was until God said. Romans 5 verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Sin was not imputed on them until the law was established. For Adam and Eve, it was fine to walk around naked until a law was put in where God is asking, but who told you that you were naked in the first place? Who's the preacher that said to you, you must stop smoking and you just got saved? And God is saying, I'm not here to deal with you, Adam, I'm here to deal with the one who said in the law. Where there is no law, there is no sin. The law strengthens, it gives power and energy to sin in your life. The moment you try to not sin to be good, is the moment you will sin more. It is a strange law at work. This is what Paul was arguing in Romans chapter 7. He says, but uh, has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not, but sin that it might appear sin was producing death in me through what is good so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. Paul was speaking when he was under the law and he said there was a force working in him that made him to do what he didn't want to do because of the law. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice, I do not do. But what I hate, I do that. 
If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it. It's no longer I who sin, but it is sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I cannot find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I don't want to do, I practice. Now if I do what I don't want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. And he got a revelation, he says, but if I don't want to do this thing and I keep on doing it, it is not me who's doing it. There's another force at work. When you get saved and you have a desire, you say, I don't want to go with my old friends anymore in a nightclub and live the life that I used to, but then I'm serving and there's something pulling me and I do it and I hate, I don't want to do it. The fact that you have that feeling is a sign of your salvation because you realize there's now two laws working in you. There's one that doesn't want to do it, but there's another force called the law of sin and death that is pulling you towards that side. And because that battle is going on, you realize so that is not the true me. That is another thing, that is sin. So go with me to Galatians 5 verse 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Galatians 5 verse 22. In the actual translation it says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, double colon. And then saying this is love. It is joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And then what, what does it say? Against such there is no law. Those who walk in faith and in love, there is no law against them. 1 John 4 verse 8, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So what is sin? When I do something that is not in faith or in love, faith that works in love cannot work in selfishness. It cannot steal anything from anyone. Faith that works in love will not kill anybody or murder or lie. It will fulfill the whole law. So the law has no power over me, which means sin is dead. Sin is not strengthened. And when you catch this revelation, sin will lose its power and its hold. And all of a sudden you will realize that the thing you don't want to do anymore ceases to have power in your life.